Hi, I'm Juwon Kim from KAIST. I will present IPLFS, Low Structure File System Without Garbage Collection. Here is the outline of presentation. First of all, I will show you the background and motivation. Second, I will explain the problem that we faced. Third and fourth, I will introduce you our development, IPLFS, and interval mapping. At the end, I will show you the evaluation and conclusion. Let's start with background and motivation. In 1991, Mozamblom developed a log structure file system. The log structure file system is designed to optimize the write performance. It traces the file system partition as a single log and writes data block in an append-only manner. This figure shows how the log structure file system appends the data block. For the write of a block D, the block D is appended at the end of the log. For update of a block A to A prime, the A prime is appended and A is invalidated. Likewise, the log structure file system appends new block at the end of the log. The log structure file system converts random write on a file into the sequential write. The block is appended at the end of the log, regardless of the block's index in a file. This append-only nature enhances the write performance by avoiding sick operation in a disk. Likewise, the log structure file system efficiently handles random write workload. Its design is a perfect fit for the write dominant workload and for slow write devices such as flash storage and SMR disks. However, the log structure file system has not been received till the recent days. Since its release at 1991, there are few deployments at the data center and mobile file system. Why is the log structure file system not widely adopted? The reason is garbage collection. As the log structure file system keeps appending the data blocks, it will run out of free space for logging. To obtain the free space for logging, the log structure file system reclaims the invalid blocks. It migrates valid blocks in the old segments to the free segment and frees the old segments. This activity is called garbage collection. The bad news is that garbage collection is costly. The garbage collection generates additional I.O. when migrating valid blocks. Also, checkpoints triggered before and after the garbage collection flush the cached metadata to the disk. The global locks for checkpoint and garbage collection block file operations such as write and append. We measure the overhead of garbage collection with YCSB benchmark, and this is the result. When the garbage collection starts, the throughput significantly decreases and the average update latency increases. In other words, garbage collection degrades performance and predictability. Our research start, start with one question. Why does the garbage collection exist? Our answer is the size of logical file system partition is limited. The size of legacy file system partition is limited by the size of physical storage. Therefore, the file system has to reuse the logical blocks and the garbage collection is inevitable. Then what if the file system partition is virtually infinite? In that case, the file system does not need to reuse the logical blocks. We propose to separate the file system partition size from the disk size and make the file system partition size very large so the log structure file system does not perform garbage collection. The infinite logical partition does not mean that we can write valid blocks beyond the storage capacity. The file system has three types of blocks. Valid, invalid, and free. In the, in the legacy file system, the sum of their sizes is less or equal to the size of storage. For the infinite logical partition, the size of total valid blocks should be less or equal to the storage size. The size of our infinite logical partition is 8 zettabyte. This, this size is large enough to provide free logical blocks during the flash storage lifespan. Flash cell can be erased or programmed for the only limited number of times. The flash storage lifespan expires long before it fully uses up the 8 zettabyte logical partition. This figure depicts actively used file system partition in the infinite logical partition. We name actively used file system partition as mapping interval. The mapping interval starts from the first valid logical block and ends at the last valid logical block. The mapping interval is updated by append and discard. When the head of the mapping interval is discarded, then its head moves to the higher LBA. When a block is appended, 
the tail of mapping interval moves toward the higher LBA. Likewise, the mapping interval slides toward the higher LBA, and its size can change. Here is another figure that explains the actively used file system partition. The mapping interval keeps sliding toward the higher LBA. Inside the mapping interval, there are partially discarded mappings. Let's move on to the problem formulation. To handle very large file system partition, new overhead arises both on file system and FTL. On the file system side, there is a metadata overhead. The legacy log structure file system has some metadata whose size becomes huge with the infinite logical partition. On FTL side, there is a mapping interval overhead. The legacy mapping table consumes a huge amount of memory with the infinite logical partition. To reduce the overhead, we have developed a new I.O. stack as shown in this figure. Our development consists of two parts. IPLFS, the log structure file system with the infinite log partition, and interval mapping, a space efficient mapping structure for FTL. Let's take a look at the IPLFS first. This is a very simple overview of IPLFS. IPLFS appends on 64-bit sector space without garbage collection. At the same time, IPLFS dispatches discard command to the storage for the invalidated blocks. IPLFS performs a unique operation named discard logging. I will talk about the discard logging later. The IPLFS is built on FTFS, one of the legacy log structure file systems. FTFS has three major metadata, block bitmap, reverse mapping, and file index. The sizes of block bitmap and reverse mapping are proportional to the logical partition size. With the infinite logical partition, their sizes become 512 terabyte and 8 exabyte, respectively. Both sizes are too huge to maintain. Therefore, we carefully trim the block bitmap and reverse mapping in the IPLFS. To verify whether it is OK to remove both of them, we search for their use. Before talking about their use, let me explain a discard command first. The discard command contains information of region to be discarded. It informs SSD of the file system blocks that are no longer used by the file system. Discard command helps to prohibit FTL garbage collection module from migrating the invalid file system blocks. This is how the F2FS discards the file system block. When the file system block is invalidated by the garbage collection, truncate, and unlink, the file system unsets corresponding bit in the block bitmap. At the checkpoint routine, the file system scans the dirty block bitmaps and creates discard commands. Only when I.O. is idle, at most eight discard commands are dispatched at 50 millisecond time interval. Let's go back to the IPLFS metadata. This table shows the use of each metadata. Since there is no garbage collection in IPLFS, we remove the reverse mapping. The block bitmap is used for two cases, garbage collection and discard. We develop new metadata for discard to replace the block bitmap. They are named discard bitmap and discard log. Discard bitmap in memory is for creating the discard commands. Discard log on disk is for crash recovery of discard commands. The discard bitmap indicates the blocks that should be discarded. A single discard bitmap represents a section whose size is 1 gigabyte by default. The discard command is organized with hash table whose key is section number. The discard bitmap differs from the legacy block bitmap in that it does not maintain every section in the logical partition. The discard bitmap is created if there is no existing discard bitmap for the incoming invalidated blocks. It is deleted after being transformed into the discard comments at the checkpoint. This is the discard mechanism of IPLFS. It is almost similar to the legacy log structure file system, except that discard bitmap replaces the block bitmap. IPLFS dispatches discard in a more aggressive fashion than the legacy log structure file system. Whether or not I.O. is idle, at most 16 discard commands are dispatched at 15 millisecond time interval. Since discard bitmap and discard command are in memory, they can be lost by power failure, and this brings about a new problem. Let me explain the problem step by step. 
This card bitmap is containing invalidated block information. From the discard bitmap, discard commands are created. When the crash occurs, we'll lose discard command in the memory. Without discard command, flash pages are never invalidated and unnecessarily take up the storage space. We call this problem storage leak. This is a unique problem that arises in the IPLFS. To prevent the storage leak, we propose discard logging. Idea is very simple. Just log the discard commands into a checkpoint pack and make them recoverable from the crash. The checkpoint pack is saved on the disk, so we don't lose it by the crash. Let me explain discard logging mechanism step by step. Referring to the discard bitmap, the discard commands are created in memory. Then we conduct discard logging in the checkpoint pack. The checkpoint pack is written on a disk. After the crash, the discard commands in the memory are lost. It's time to recover the discard log. First of all, read the checkpoint pack from the storage. Then read discard logs in the checkpoint pack and recover the discard commands. After the recovery, IPLFS start dispatching discard commands. Then FTL mappings and flash pages are invalidated. To sum up, the discard log enables to complete discard even after the crash. Here is the complete file system layout of IPLFS. We add space for discard log inside the checkpoint pack. And this is the end of the file system section for the infinite logical partition. Now let's move on to the FTL part for the infinite logical partition. We develop a new mapping scheme of FTL and its name is interval mapping. There are various types of legacy FTL mapping techniques, such as page mapping, block mapping, super block mapping, and so on. Those mapping tables map the whole logical partition. With the infinite logical partition, legacy mapping table gets huge. For example, the size of page mapping table becomes 8 exabyte. It is almost impossible to map the infinite logical partition with the legacy mapping tables. This is an overview of interval mapping, a space-efficient mapping structure for the infinite logical partition. Interval mapping only maps actively used region in the logical partition. The actively used region can partially include invalid mappings. To exclude the mappings for the invalidated LBAs, interval mapping is designed as tree-based mapping structure. In a leaf node of the tree, we apply our new mapping scheme named fixed region mapping to reduce the memory footprint. The figure shows mapping interval and inter interval mapping tree. Interval mapping tree only maps the mapping interval. By the discard and append, mapping interval is updated and moves toward the higher LBA. Then interval mapping tree is updated to map the new mapping interval. A structure of interval mapping tree is three-level tree. There are different types of nodes on each layer. The names of the node at the first, second, and third level are root node, zone node, and map node, respectively. The root node maintains the range of mapping interval and an array of zone node pointers. This root node shrinks and expands to follow up the mapping interval. The size of root node can change up to the mapping interval size. The zone node represents a single zone. We define the zone as 16 gigabyte region. The zone node maintains the map node pointers. The zone node is deallocated when every map node pointer is invalidated. A map node maintains LBA to PBA mappings for a 16 megabyte region. Total size of the map node accounts for 99% of the interval mapping tree size. Reducing, reducing map node size is a key to reduce interval mapping tree size. We develop a new mapping scheme named fixed region mapping for the map node. The goal of the fixed region mapping is mapping only valid LBAs and excluding invalid LBAs. Fixed region mapping consists of two elements, region directory and region mapping. The region mapping represents the consecutive valid mappings. It consists of a header and a mapping array. The header contains dark LBA and of the valid region. 
A region mapping is created for each valid region. The region directory provides location of region mapping. It points to the header of the region mapping. The fixed region mapping enables to compact the map node. This figure depicts an initial map node. In the map node, every mapping is valid, so there is a single valid region. There is a region mapping for the single valid region, and also there is a re single region directory pointing the, to the header of the region mapping. As time goes by, the region is partially invalidated by this card. Then the map node is reorganized to reduce its size. We call this map node compaction. The map node compaction is divided into the four steps. Step one, divide the LB space of the map node into the fixed regions. The size of dividing region is minimum whole size, and for more details, please refer to our paper. In this case, LB space is divided into the four regions. Step two, for each region, create the new region directory. In this case, Total four region directories are created for region 0, 1, 2, and 3. Step 3, create a region mapping for each valid region. In this case, total three region mappings are created. Step 4, make the region directory point to the region mappings. We create region directory for each valid region, for each region. If the region mapping is included in the ice region, then the ice region directory points to that region mapping. For example, please look at the blue region. The blue region is included in the region zero, so the region directory zero points to the blue region mapping. This is the end of the map node compaction. Let's move on to the evaluation section. This is the evaluation setup. We tested on storage Cosmos plus open SSD. In this presentation, I will introduce only two experiments. First is garbage collection elimination test with FIO benchmark, and second is map node compaction test with file server workload in Firebench. In the garbage collection elimination test, we evaluated on two cases. First is when only file system garbage collection occurs, and second is when both file system and FTL garbage collections occur. The first graph shows the result of first case. When the file system garbage collection starts, the throughput of F2FS decreases by a tenth, while that of IPLFS is steady. It is because IPLFS is free from the file system garbage collection. The second graph shows the result of the second case. While the throughput of IPLFS decreases because of FTL garbage collection, IPLFS still outperforms FTFS since it does not suffer from the file system garbage collection. We evaluate map node compaction on file server workload in Filebench, which performs random write. We measure tree size for 1,600 seconds. Without compaction, the tree size keeps increasing because of the partially discarded holes. With compaction, the tree size is steady. Here is our conclusion. Disk size logical partition is main cause of the garbage collection in log structure file system. So we develop IPLFS, the log structure file system for the infinite logical partition. IPLFS is free from the file system garbage collection. We also develop interval mapping, which only maps actively used file system region. We found out that IPLFS outperforms FTFS by up to 12 times. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening and feel free to ask any question.